make sure that the sound works. Yeah. All right. Well, we are live, but let us know in the chat if you can hear us pretty good. And if you can see us, because last two weeks ago you couldn't see us hardly. Uh-oh. Mute yourself. We've got Peggy and Shelby and Allison here. Good morning. <coughs> they I said just, the sound is great, but it didn't sound like it was coming through the... I just want to test them. Oh, not anymore. Okay, thanks, Perfect. Shelby. <laughs> That's good news. Yay! Okay, so we have the mic working. We have the video working. Things are looking okay. Yay! Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Um, I'll have it. He's not ready. What y'all sipping on this morning? English breakfast. You got English breakfast? I've got coffee and San Pellegrino. Cool. All right, I'm ready. You're not ready. You have tea in your hand. Nice. All right, I'm ready now. Welcome to Books We Never Read. Except for those we have. I'm Jason. I'm Nicole. And this is episode 39 of Books We Never Read, where we will discuss Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis from about a third of the way into the end. <laughs> <laughs> it amounts to basically the whole book. Almost the whole book. Yeah. Um, so I realized... When I started reading after last, two weeks ago, after we went live, I realized that I had skipped a whole bunch of chapters um, going between the audiobook and the physical book um, because all the books, or all the chapters are just their names with no other information and I got messed up in there somewhere. So let's see, Peggy's drinking coffee, Allison's drinking water. Ooh, Shelby says it's 6 p.m. It's 1 o'clock. Nice. We should do... Drunken book reviews. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you would all really enjoy that if we, we were drinkers. <laughs> but... We'd have to put like the explicit thingy <laughs> on there. <laughs> uh, that would not be suitable for... If, uh, if y'all have never watched it, they do like drunk history where they get historians like hammered. And they it's so good. It's really good. It's so good. That'd be a lot of fun. Because you still know what you're talking about when you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. it, it'd, be, it'd be fun to do... Like, read the book drunk, like, really drunk, and then have to soberly report oh, on what you man. thought you read. <laughs> no, it'd be like a fever dream. <laughs> Peggy says yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it happen. All right. Well, before we get started, please make sure that if you are watching this episode, it's what you're actually meaning to watch. We talk about the books as if you have already read the portions that we have read and that we're discussing, so spoilers abound. Um, if you're joining us live, please participate in the live chat. We understand if you're just lurking, um, you know, we all do that sometimes, but we love to have you participate. And if you're watching this video on the replay, please participate in the comment section. There's also a place for you to take the conversation off of YouTube at Goodreads. You can find us at Books We Never Read. We have a community there, um, or a group, community group there, and, uh, we've got the books in little discussion tabs and and you can continue the conversation there so um i think that's all my notes you know like subscribe share and recommend please recommend books to us if there's anything that you're wanting to read and you're like Psh, i wish the book club would just read this so i could read this too let us know i um like full disclosure i didn't enjoy this book very much ah and i think it's because this is the first book we have read where I'm also reading a book on the side that, like, I decided I need to read this book right now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I just, I had this distraction. He's and cheating on the book club. I'm cheating <laughs> on the book club. Yeah. Well, and I will say, I liked this book. It was, it was just fine. It was a great read. It was a great perspective, something that I had not read before and a perspective I had not read before. Um, I liked her other book that I've read, between Shades of Grey, um, also by Ruta Sepetis, I liked it much, much better. Hmm. Um, it was just, and again, it was a perspective that I had not been introduced to before. Yeah. Um, 
to be clear, I, I don't think this is a bad book. It's oh, just, definitely like, not a bad book. It's not in my top half of what we have read for the club yet. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not bottom three because I know exactly which ones those are. Yeah, we all know exactly <laughs> which ones those are. Um, everybody li <laughs> likes the idea of um, the drunken book club. Uh, Peggy says it's Louisiana. We can drink at any time, especially on a Sunday. Bloody Mary is a breakfast drink. Um, mimosas, yeah. Louisianians can justify any food or drink at any time. Mm -hmm. We don't care. Doesn't matter. It just is good stuff. The idea that there are certain things that belong at certain times oh, is absurd. so bizarre. Right? Um, if, if, I don't think you've ever read uh, the Stormlight Archives, but it's a Brandon Sanderson book. Well, he's the guy that wrote the mm -hmm. um, the thief books that we listen to on audio. But anyway, um, he in one of his series, they have women's food and men's food. Hmm. And like, how dumb is that? Mm -hmm. And then at one point, like, one of the characters eats men's food, and they're like, oh, this is terrible. Uh, <laughs> so, wow, yeah. that's interesting. So, <laughs> um, okay, so where do you want to start? Um, do you want to start by, like, theme? Do you want to start by character? I want to start by style, because we've already mentioned that kind of, right? Where, like, mm -hmm. there was no chapters, it was just the, the characters' names. Um there, there was a lot going on, especially with the, with the swapping of, like, the characters. And I, I think that's part of what it was, was that it took me out of the book, right? Mm. Swapping characters so often, especially there towards the end. Bang. They, yeah, bang. <laughs> bang. <laughs> it and, was and, great look, to see it from each person's yeah. point of view. I'll, I'll tell you what, though. That made the book feel urgent, right? Oh. Like, it was trying to explain. It was trying to express danger and immediacy, and, and it did that. But... I think it worked really well there. In all the other parts, I was like, okay, now, like, which guy is this again? Mm -hmm. I kept getting confused between, like, the Polish girl and the nurse. Mm -hmm. um, and then at one point, like, one girl was having a baby, and I was like, oh, I thought that was the other one, right? Like, I got, oh, I got no. a little confused. Yeah. Um, but, like, stylistically, I feel like that pulled me out a little bit. But there at the end, it worked really mm -hmm. well, I think. So. I will recommend the audiobook. For this one, they had a different narrator for each character. It was beautiful. You know, it it, it helped your brain really keep everybody straight. Um, mm -hmm. It was perfect for this. Yeah. This is one, though, that I swapped a lot back and forth also between reading and listening. And reading mm -hmm. and listening so. That'll mess you up, man. Yeah, You'll skip up. some chapters thinking that you're good to go, and then all of a sudden you don't know why someone's shoe is hollow. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, w one other, like, style thing that I really liked was the whole, like... Um, you know, f fear is a um, yes a hunter, a hunter or a Guilt liar. Is a or, yeah, yeah, all, all those different yeah. things, right? Yeah, uh, having those like come full circle again mm -hmm. when they are swimming um, was really nice. I, I I enjoyed that tie back. That was really cool. Yeah. So, so I guess talking about those those little lines: fate is a hunter, fear is a hunter, shame is a hunter, mm -hmm. and guilt is a hunter. Mm -hmm. I a hundred percent agree that those are hunters mm -hmm. you know like in our in our own lives those are emotions that you can't run from they will chase yeah. if you don't handle it they will chase you down and consume right. you um and i think the nastiest of those is fear yeah and we see that through alfred von poophead yeah well i, I think i think that one was kind of cheating because <laughs> that's funny uh <laughs> We are going to have an entire 15-minute conversation talking about how terrible that child is. And I have such <laughs> conflicted emotions about it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, me too. Uh, but but um, that, that one's kind of cheating because, because, you know, shame is a hunter, sure, but shame, it's fear, right? Yeah. Shame is a flavor of fear. Right. Fear is the ultimate yeah. of all of those fear things. Fear is the hunter, right? Yeah. Fear is the mind killer. Read our next book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But but um, but there are, are degrees and, and different feelings associated yeah. with each of those things. And so you can kind of separate them a little bit. Yeah. Fear that stems from shame and yeah. fear that stems from was guilt. Was one guilt and one was shame? Yes. Okay. Amelia's yeah. was shame. Yeah. Joanna's was guilt. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think I enjoyed the distinction. I wish there had been a little more exploration of the distinction between those two because mm -hmm. because shame is different than guilt and mm -hmm. we don't talk about here and like in america we don't talk about shame all that much we have none well but but we also do and we feel about like weird things that we should probably feel guilt for yeah anyway, during the day when i am talking to people about because i spend most of my time talking to people about these things like it doesn't matter if you run from fear or from 
or for, from guilt, shame, whatever, like, when you run from it, in their case, like, doing drugs, <laughs> it's still there, right? It's a hunter, right? It's right. laying in wait. It yeah. is patient. It is coming for you. And if that is the thing that you are running from because it is hunting you, it is also, like, guaranteed to come back, right? There is no way that you're going to live mm-hmm. the rest of your life without any guilt or any shame or any fear or, you know, whatever the other options are. Um, and so, like, I, I do... Uh, I do like that, right? Like, it wasn't something frivolous, right? Like, mm-hmm. some, I've complained to Nicole several times. Like, I, I I don't like it when a story is like, and then they beat it with the power of love. Because love is the most powerful thing out there. It's not. Like, or, you know what I mean? Like, I get it, and yeah. I understand the sentiment, but, like, people love each other, and then they don't. And then they, like, kill each other, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? if it's love within a certain definition and context. Sure. And it's not specific enough sometimes. Yeah, I just... <laughs> And that depends on the audience, yeah. how deep they go into it. Yeah. But I get it. I just, like, there are some other things that are maybe more powerful. And they're bad things. And it's these things. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think I like that as, like, the sort of, like, the driving emotion mm-hmm. that, 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 that comes full circle. Yeah. And so for Ioana, guilt is a hunter. Uh-huh. You know, she, her, her, her originating guilt is that, She's responsible for her cousin mm-hmm. and their family being killed. Mm-hmm. And it's because she left a note. Mm-hmm. When she borrowed the stuff, borrowed the stuff mm-hmm. from that house yeah. where the family was dead upstairs, she had left a note again. And then later on was thinking, oh my God, I, I've done it again, you right. know? And, and turns out that Florian had stolen that note right. um, or whatever. But I thought that that was interesting that... It, that, that's just something within her, right? Like, yeah. because she's very kind and she's very responsible, mm-hmm. but she committed the same mistake, yeah. you know, it, it, adding on to that guilt, you right. know, that followed her around for so long. Yeah. Well, and I, I, she feels a certain amount of guilt, I think, for, um, you know, we see that in the scene where um, the girl falls through the ice, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. she, she felt responsible. Yeah, I forgot about her. I mean, well, that was last week, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember what week it was. No, that it would have been our yeah. our normal week, too. But. but but yeah, so she feels some responsibility for her a- after that scene. Mm-hmm. Even though the, there was, like, really nothing she could have done. So, And part of it is just that, like, she didn't go die with her, right? Because I think Florian... Right. I, can't, I can't remember which girl Florian hauls out. but Florian yeah. held on to her yeah. and also had pushed back Amelia mm-hmm. because Amelia went after mm-hmm. her, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I had forgotten about that. And I'm, oh, I had a thought. I'm glad you mentioned that. Shoot. It, it's gone. Um, let's see. Let's see. Peggy says that she loved the book and she until she hated it, uh, but only because the ending was so abrupt. And it, well, you mentioned that, too. You're like, wow, I thought we'd be on the water for a minute. Psh, yeah. No, it was amazing. They hop on the boat and the boat goes down. <laughs> and Peggy says, love doesn't pay the bills or make problems go away. Um, Shelby, it's a, oh, it's a good thing. Right. It's just... Well, like, love is a thing, right? Yeah. But there also has to be the underlying true things that, that love is the umbrella term for, like, commitment and, you know... Yeah. I just, I feel like, if like, maybe trust is stronger than Right. That. Or, like, maybe loyalty. Right. It, like, sure, certainly loyalty can be broken, but, like, love comes and goes because it is an emotion. Right. You pick something that is not an emotion. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The point is I think it's fickle. <laughs> yeah, fickle. Shelby says um, she enjoyed this book a lot. Historical fiction is usually going to go well for her um and peggy says uh but here it and i think that's love accidentally made these real connections between people who are supposed to hate each other sure i thought that was such an interesting part of this read on two levels number one so you know as far as americans were concerned all of those people were caucasians right we wouldn't let ships of Jews into the country because they looked like the enemy, quote unquote. They looked like the enemy. Like the, Caucasian the, people? The Jews looked just like the Nazis. Right. And the Nazis looked just like the Poles. And yeah. They all, you know, they all, we couldn't visually identify differences between them and so we rejected them all for a while, mm-hmm. um, sending so many people to their deaths. Wow. Um, and so from the American history point of view, you know, it, it was easy during World War II. We just shut all that down and we didn't, yeah. or it was really before World War II. It was before we really got involved that we were like, nope, don't come over. Hmm. We don't want anything to do with it. But 
when you're looking inside the book, in their world, they know the differences between each other. You know, there's right. the Prussian, and yeah. there's the Pole, and there's the, you know, yeah. the little German boy or whatever. Um, and and I just think it's interesting that they could see those differences or acknowledge those differences between them, especially in Amelia's discussion or her, her thoughts. She remembered about her friends who were Jews, and they would go to synagogue, and then they would come over to her house for tea. And, and she wondered, you know, if her own daughter would recognize that there once was a time when people who were different could be friends. Mm -hmm. And that's so sad, yeah. you know. Oh, it's just, it's so powerful. Um, but like Peggy said, you know, love did happen amongst these people. Joanna mm -hmm. had so much love for the people that she cared for. And the shoe poet had so much love for the wandering boy. Um, and even the shoe poet talked about how even when you think the tank is empty, there's there's just no more room for any new love mm -hmm. in, in your heart. It, it just, you find a way. You never really run out of your capacity to care for other people. Ah, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a real shame, but it's like just part of the human condition where it's easiest for us to see differences, right? Like it just, it mm -hmm. just is, you know, like I, I don't know, just because most of the encounters that you have with people aren't necessarily negative, but they're also not like incredibly basic. And by incredibly basic, I mean like when the bombs start dropping and the torpedoes hit the boat, then you realize that like that's a person too and that person is trying to get their baby on this boat and you would do that and oh okay we have so much in common right but we just live in such a way that you just see like these weird differences mm -hmm. like you go to a different building on Sunday morning than right. I go to a different building and so we should kill each other obviously right yeah but but then it takes that kind of like terror to see the similarities between things right you know it you know, it takes a 9-11 or we, whatever these like weird yeah. rock bottom moments are where people are like, oh, okay, we actually care about each other and this isn't that big a deal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes, and, and the worst part of it is to turn somebody from being an other, you have to have a worse other, mm -hmm. right? which is why we need aliens. You have to have a, a common enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a shame. It right? is. It's a real shame because, because it means that like there's this weird thing in us where we're like, we're always looking for that mm -hmm. because it, yeah, and like I've said this before on the show, and, and some of y'all probably weren't joined with us yet, but um, you know, psychologically, you are only aware of yourself because you are aware of the other first. Mm -hmm. And so, if there is no other, if all people are you, then you are nothing, right? Like, it, it, there's no boundary where the unis starts, and so there has to be another, right? Even even like culturally, you know, like we just have to have that, and it's weird. Mm -hmm. but. It is. So back to the comments, um, Shelby says, shame is hard to process. Fear is an emotion that has more common steps. You can work through it, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. so let's talk about shame, since yeah. we're there. So yeah. uh, shame is a hunter. That one was Amelia's. Um, I think Amelia is such an interesting character. We get, you know, these two images with her, um, just that young, sweet innocence yeah. against the atrocities that she experienced firsthand. You know, well, they're finding out like August wasn't is real, not really but, a yeah. but she well, he's real. Well, he is, yeah. but it, but she created that image to, to help her to cope with what was going on in her body, and you know how violated she had been, and how betrayed she had been by that family. Yeah. Um, it's so sad. And from the outside reading into it, you know, she has nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. You know, why should she feel shame? Well, so because, because you don't feel, you don't feel shame. You, you feel guilt about things you have done. You feel shame about who you are. Yeah. And who she are now, who she is now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, good night. <laughs> um, who she is now is, is like ruined. Right, yeah. who she is now is spoiled. Is you know, and, and like you're right, that's not her fault. Mm -hmm. But fault is a question of guilt. It's not a question about shame. It doesn't matter whose fault something mm -hmm. is. Shame is about who you are, right? And so you are this thing. Now. And I would disagree that she is that thing, right? right? But right. right, but in her mind, but that's and in how that she, culture, yeah. And it's you know, I mean, she physically has been raped. Her land has been raped. You know, I mean. It, 
you really just see the brunt of just the damage that war does to people yeah. and to families and to lands on her. Yeah. And, you know, it's so beautiful when she does accept her baby and starts speaking to her in her native language. And, and even though the baby has, she's a blob and she has no clue what's going on, you know, yeah. she, that baby was her country and that baby was her past and her present and yeah. her future. And, and that was really, really, really beautiful. Um, well, and I, I think that's, you know, that's, it's part of a redeeming moment because it's once that baby is born, she is not just all these things she has been. She's also now a mother. She's yeah. also now, you know, a part of something bigger. And so, so by expanding her identity in that way, that can help alleviate, that can help alleviate mm-hmm. shame. I tell you what, when she was in that lifeboat and seeing all the little, little kid bodies and mm-hmm. she started saying all the little duckies, ooh, ooh, yeah, that was messed up. I was rowing at the time. <laughs> And I'm like trying to like keep my breath and like not cry through the end of this book. Oh, it was just so sad. Woo. Peggy said she was really upset about Ingrid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Ingrid, that was the blind girl. Yeah. Man. So okay, so all the little duckies. Um I was sad for Amelia that that she died alone. Um, and I was even sadder for Amelia that right before she died, she was alone with Alfred. Alfred von Poophead. Yeah. Man, oh, just like right there at the end, just one one viewer. Oh, yeah. get out of here. I'm let's, glad he hit his head. Let's spend some time talking about Alfred, right? So so throughout the course of the week, uh, I, one of us would be listening to the audiobook, and you would just hear from across the house, you just hear somebody go, Ugh. And you knew they were reading an Alfred chapter. That was me. It was just I was. Just, <laughs> well, but I was doing it too. I just did it too. Grunting and groaning. Yeah. Remember to wear two pairs of socks. Right. Don't your bunions. Don't bunions. Well, oh. and, and then to find out that Hannah Laura is really a Jew, and that and he's responsible for her being killed. Yeah, it's it. The, the whole thing was really gross. But but and uh, we, yeah, we we have to remember that like a he is a child, right? Like right. I, I'm, I'm he is he is a gross child. And it right. doesn't ma- it doesn't matter what factors have got you to where you are. If you're killing people, you're responsible for that, right? Like, like yes. I understand. I understand that there are precipitating factors. I understand that he didn't like just wake up one day and was like, "I'm gonna murder people." He is still responsible, right? Like, yeah. I, I I have to go that way. I don't. That's okay if everybody else doesn't. But um, I mean, he was really gross, and he, and but yeah. but he was he was there to represent to us like sort of, you know, what that looks like, and I didn't feel anything at his death I, mm-hmm. not at all um, I, I hoped you know I'd said this in week one I hoped that Alfred was going to have a real redemptive storyline where he you know he is brainwashed by that personality cult yeah. you know or whatever that um, Hitler had and you know and that this is the pure race and this is what we do and this is why we do it um, and I wanted to feel bad for him yeah. you know because he I don't think we're supposed to and, and like, I, I, I think I'm glad that there was no redemption because there's usually not. Right. right? Like, like there doesn't, there doesn't have to be. And, right. And, and that made me sad that he didn't get redeemed, yeah. that he, he died before he learned that he was very wrong. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, how many people did have to live their whole lives and at some point realize that they were very wrong. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the catch, right? Is is he did not die thinking he was wrong. He died thinking I'm going to do one last favor for yeah. the Reich or whatever, right? And and we here can sit and look at him and say that he was wrong, mm-hmm. and he would probably look at us and think we're disgusting, mm-hmm. and that's okay. We can call him wrong <laughs> and then go over there and handle it, right? <laughs> that doesn't bother me, right? Like, yeah. it, it, but but there's, you know, there there's. Um, I, I, I don't like I don't like the idea of like moral relativism. To be clear, I do not like the idea that like it's okay for him to think that because it's not right. Right. I have some very strong thoughts on that that may come out in some other book. But um, yeah, I, I didn't think he needed to be redeemed. He could he could just go out the way he came. Yeah, and, and he did die doing what he loved, and just hating people. Butterfly. And, yeah. What? Uh, the, uh. the the point where I knew there was no coming back was the chapter when he was like, how absolutely inconsiderate of women to have babies during a time of war. And I was just like, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Now, he may not understand how all that works, right? Like, right. I'm not convinced that he really got it all. 
No, because a lot and lots of men still do seem to think yeah. that women have some capacity to control mm-hmm. whether or not <laughs> conception occurs. <Right. laughs> that is wild. Uh, let's see. Um, oh gosh. Okay, so let's get caught up on comments for a second. Sure. Um, Peggy says they messed up part of Amelia's. The messed up part. Oh, the messed up. Sorry, the messed up part of Amelia's story was we met her when she was about to be violated again, and Florian yeah. saved her from that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was more worried about her, you know, making such a hero out of Florian, because you just didn't know what Florian was going to be, yeah. and, like, what he was doing for so long. Um, <clears throat> Shelby says, Amelia goes full mama bear after the boat starts to sink. Mm-hmm. I was rooting for her every time she made a decision to fight for survival. I mean, she immediately was like, put on your coat, put on your life vest, go up. It's yeah. cold out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, she was, she was quick on it. She turned into such an adult. She was only 15. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy by the end of this book to forget how, like, young all these people she are. She was a wee baby. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Shelby had no sympathy for Alfred, ever. Couldn't do it. (laughs) Peggy says she wanted him to come through, but what a disappointing human. Brainwashed and emotionally abused, but he made choices to hurt others. And that is absolutely true. And even just his, you know, his thoughts toward women. Like, ooh, let me go down to the pool park because it's too hot down there. And maybe they took off some of their clothes and, like... And then he's so angry with them when they're laughing at him. And, you know, I mean, you could just tell something was wrong with that boy. Um, Peggy says she's a fine specimen. Yuck. Oh, yeah. And Peggy also says Florian called it when he said that Alfred was a sociopath. Florian recognized it pretty quickly that his behaviors were not right. And, you know, what's a real shame is there was probably a lot of those at that time. You know, either... You know, maybe not because they were born that way, but but grown through these circumstances throughout the course of the war, um, who had just become acclimated to mm-hmm. atrocity. Well, and yeah, and there was plenty of time to get kids on board with that way of thinking before World War World War Two was in full swing, right. right? Like Hitler didn't come out of nowhere, yeah. so there was plenty of time to to make those little Hitler youth. Whew. Alfred. Let me see what else I have. I have him in my book is Alfred Von Turdface. Um, oh, yeah. Just fear is the grossest. And we see that through him. And and we are so disgusted with Alfred. I think that I could say that. Yeah, sure. And everyone agrees. Well, and, and like, but we're disgusted on every level. And, mm-hmm. and, and maybe I'm disgusted on different levels. But, like, even the part where he was just like, I use my mind and I'm not, like, a strong person. And that's like, ugh. Like, I get it. Some people are smart and some people are strong, whatever. But when you're like, I don't have to be strong because I'm smart and that's my thing, like, mm-hmm. you can try to be both. Right. Like, some people can't be smart. You could, like, you could be strong. Like, yeah. It's, it's, he's like a nut and button, right? Like, he, he's yeah. trying to, he's trying to advance his way by bringing other people down, mm-hmm. right? By, like, reporting folks and, like, mm-hmm. by, you know, if, if I can't be better than them, well, they will be less than me. You know? Right. So, yeah, I just, I have no sympathy for that. Yeah. He was something else. Uh, And then Florian. Mm -hmm. Fate is a hunter. And we see that fate is a hunter run through Florian and Amelia's storylines. Very much like how she ends up with his backpack and he ends up with her baby. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, But I I did not like this growing attachment between Floria and Ioana at first. I was like, well, here's the, like, love story. And, like, I don't... There's no time! Right? Right. But in real life, you can't control these things. Sure. And, and love does, again, that's another kind of theme through here, is that there is always a capacity to love somebody, you know, and to, and to trust in people. And having this shared experience, of, of course, that would, like, solidify their mm-hmm. their relationship. Um, and that's nice that they had each other mm-hmm. to make it through. I mean, what a horrible thing they've gone through. And, and that by the end of it, you know, they had... What was her name? Hel, uh, Helsvinka, or the baby, Amelia's mm-hmm. baby. I can't remember her name. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had the wandering boy, Klaus. And they had their own child mm-hmm. um, in America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad there was like a little happy ending there. Yeah. For them. And yeah, happy ending, but as Florian 
kind of reminded us in his last little chapter, fate is a hunter, right? Yeah. And it, it came back when his backpack washed ashore. Yeah. And yeah. so he'll he'll live his whole life, even though he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. He lives his whole life waiting for his past to, to wash up ashore. Yeah. Uh, maybe not a happy ending, but an ending that didn't end in the water, which is therefore happy. Right. So that's, that's yeah, man, that was crazy. Um, and I thought it was Florian's storyline was interesting. His father had tried to kill Hitler. Mm -hmm. um, how wild, you know, just just the the life experiences of these human beings that mm -hmm. came together. I just thought it was interesting that yeah. she used someone who actively tried to be a Hitler killer. There, there were two or three almost successful attempts to kill Hitler. Uh, Tom Cruise is in a movie called Valkyrie that does it. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen that, it's, it's fun. I've never seen it's it. It's a good one. Yeah. Maybe you should watch that. I've always wanted to watch it. I just haven't gotten to it. The letter at the end, Shelby says, was surprising because mm -hmm. I didn't think about the people on shore who had to deal with the aftermath for yeah. such a long time. Yeah, wow. You know, um, the letter took me back to Westwood Giraffes. You know, there was, mm -hmm. it was sort of like a coming back around mm -hmm. uh, thing. But yeah, you're absolutely right. All that stuff goes somewhere. Hmm. How horrible. You know, you, you've made it through the war. It's over. And now you get years of what's going to wash up the shore yeah. today. You know, how terrible to have to keep <clears throat> keep reliving it and, and cleaning it up. And how amazing that that person, you know, went through the contents, noticed those names, Joanna, Florian, mm -hmm. um, and then notice the names again in the story about the the sw famous swimmer who right. was Halinka. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah. Um, she, Peggy says, uh, Shelby, you're right. I, I didn't think about it until now, about dealing with everything washing ashore. Yeah. And that's kind of symbolic, you know, of, of when a war is over. It's not just over. It's not just the treaties were signed and everything's restored and everyone agrees to the terms on a personal level. Yeah. You know, it it is not clean in that capacity at all. And in the author's note at the end, she talked about how, you know, we learn plenty about the history of wars. We learn about the strategies yep. and we learn about, you know, the heroic soldier moments and we learn about the battles and, and the politics and, and who did what to whom and then who retaliated how and then the treaty that was signed in the end. Yeah. But that's not a, like a human story, right? And, and right. You, you don't learn about like the guy who like had to deal with it. Because yeah. all those people that signed the papers usually didn't deal with it. No, they were wealthy and they were above it. And they I have lots have... of books about war. I think war is interesting. War is also really terrible. And and I think when I was a younger person, I didn't like really understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, I still play video games that have war and stuff. But like, I think I have a healthy respect for like, you know, like this is horrifying, especially after reading about World War One, right? After learning mm -hmm. about that, that's when I think I really understood. Like, oh yeah, it's like this is this is really bad. Yeah. And having historical fiction like this is so important, and it's so important for children to read stories like this that are on a level appropriate for them so that they can have that empathy and that understanding that, you know, there's the big picture, there's the war, but then there's every single human being inside of that yeah. with lives and hopes and dreams and mm. everything else. Um, and, and that there's no really... There's there's no winner, yeah. you know, at the end of that. Yeah. It's so sad. Okay, so <laughs> Let, we'll let's handle, talk we'll, no, about let's this. Ha let's handle that one after we're done talking about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's continue on for anybody who wants to hear the rest of the Okay, okay, do. okay, okay. Um, well, let's see. Ooh, I got the clint. Um, well, that's everybody. That's all. Oh, okay, so what about the shoe poet? What do you think about him? I really liked him. Oh, what a great guy. <laughs> he he was like, um, what did they call it in Greek uh, tragedies? Uh, they had the... Um, like the chorus, like the the elders that yeah, or like the yeah, maybe that the are chorus. like they're telling us how the people really right. feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of felt that he was the chorus, right? Yeah. Like he, he was he was giving you insight into yeah. all these different things. Yeah, it was it, he was a really fun character. He was, um, and you know, very wise and very patient and very understanding, and and I, I think it's interesting that he was even part of their group to begin with. You know, so many older people just wouldn't bother. They would just die in their homes, and, and they mentioned that. You know, someone mentioned that at some point. Are they still talking about that? Okay. <laughs> um, you know, but he was with them the whole time, and he was guiding them and, yeah. and helping them pace themselves and 
Yeah. You know, I think that that was so important for them to have a proper adult with them. You know, everyone yeah. else here was pretty young. Literal child, children. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Yoan was in her 20s, you yeah. know. Um, you know, and just just the love he had for Klaus and mm-hmm. throwing, you know, just getting Klaus onto the lifeboat. And, and I, I didn't understand how he went into the water. Did he just jump into the water? Or did he try to jump onto the boat? Um, I don't think, I don't think I remember. I couldn't quite understand. The group can tell us. What had happened there. They're, they're all saying that they were sad about his death, so. Yeah. 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 Um, but what a great guy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's just the elder that yeah. can bestow that wisdom. And I, I thought it was interesting, too. I think the cover of the book is inspired by the shoe poet. The, the book cover that I have is three pairs of shoes. There's a pair of boots, a pair of flats, okay, cool. um, and something else. Yeah. And, and and I wonder why were there only three pairs when we had four characters that we were hmm. watching. Um, no Nazi shoes. Right? And I, <laughs> Alfred, at some point when he's on the boat, he's like, I seem to have lost a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That'd been a fun cover, just like just one shoe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he yeah, his coin bag weighed him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had given his life jacket to Florian. His coin bag weighed him down. I kind of wondered if he just did it on purpose. Yeah, this just was, to... Peggy saying he jumped into the water. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just a little a little sacrifice to well, just get out of the confusion a lot of, options, of it, yeah. right? Uh, oh, poor Klaus. Yeah. I mean, whatever it is that happened to him when he ended up being the wandering boy. Yeah. You know, how did he lose mm-hmm. all his folks at that point? Yeah. And then losing him again, you know. Oh, so sad. Woo, talking about this is hard. Yeah. It, it was it was tough, definitely, <laughs> there. At, it was tough throughout, but definitely at the end. You know? Yeah. Well, and it's one thing just to... Okay, this is why I appreciate the book club. It's one thing just to read. I could blast through this, read it, and not get upset about it. Right. I could totally... Except that one part when I was rowing and couldn't breathe and crying. Whatever. But now that we're rehashing it and putting it all together, I mean, I'm about to have to, like, hang up this call so I can go cry in the bathroom. Like... <laughs> and just putting it all yeah. together is just... Oh, it's emotional. Uh, mm. I, the, the thing for me is, like, helpless things... Or people, like, I'll fight anything that can fight me. And I don't, like, it's not necessarily the violence that bothers me. It's it's defenselessness mm-hmm. that bothers me. And I don't I don't like that. Like, I, and, like, if you, if you knew me, like, that's just the person I am, right? Like, I feel like I have to go defend everybody that I feel can't defend themselves mm-hmm. or animals or whatever, right? But if you have a chance, figure it out. You got right? it. And, and that's part of why I don't feel bad for, like, Alfred maybe is, like, he thinks he got it. All right, go. Figure it out. And he's not innocent, right? He's not helpless. He's he's part of this machine, and I just don't don't have it for. Mm. So I've been singing "The Hills Are Alive" the whole time we've been reading this <laughs> Von Trapp family nonsense. If you've never seen "The Sound of Music," ten out of ten would recommend. It's going to take you a long time. It's based around a true story. It is not at all the true story, but you know it's a great watch. Um, and also, if you're interested in this, I would recommend The Book Thief, if you haven't read that. It was amazing. It has, like, pieces that have just embedded themselves into my brain. That's when you know, like, you've read something that's, like, changed your mm-hmm. your worldview. Like, when you just never stop thinking about it or, or it always pops up again. So, I'd recommend The Book Thief. Um, so good. And then I also, I know I've said it already, like, five times, but I recommend... Uh, Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Cepetis. Cool. It was very good. Y'all want to talk about anything else? I feel like I'm leaving stuff out. I feel like I recommended this last time. I'm going to recommend a movie. And I'm going to recommend 1917, which is a different war. Um, but it's it's a, it's a beautiful movie about the end of World War One, And it's really about, like, the last guy. Oh, is that the one-shot movie? Yeah. It's, it's, it's really a movie about, like, the last guy to die. And, like, there's always somebody, right? And like and like, what just what an absolute tragedy that is because he didn't die for any good reason, and then you're like, oh, but none of them did, right? Like, and it's, right? It's, yeah. Oh It's man. it's a fantastic just watch. The so. impact war has on lives is just incalculable. Um, uh, Ava, 
We have another story. <laughs> She's like, here's all your crap. I stayed with the carriage and no one else cared. Yeah. Sorry. And she got on her other boat. Okay, so I lost track of all the boats. Um, I don't know which boat she got on. And at the, at the end of either the novel or the author's note, it mentioned the boats that did make it. And I, I meant to go back and check and see if Ava's boat made it. Gotcha. I, I didn't make it all the way through the author's note. Either. They were real, uh, real tough on Ava. Yeah. I feel like I know Ava. <laughs> 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 I don't really know any of the other ones. I, I, I know Ava. <laughs> she was tough. Yeah. Looking out for herself. Looking out for the group in terms of how it takes care of herself. Yeah. And that's not unreasonable. Yeah. Um, Ava got on the Hansa. On the Hansa. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that part, but I don't know whether or not that was one of the ones. That yeah, made I don't it. remember if that's one of the ones that made it. Um, why is Peggy lucky? Oh, okay. I'll have to... We'll have to back up and see. That might be about the giraffe situation. Um, no, no, that was about the, the SOM tour. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Uh, let's wrap it up so we can talk about your giraffe, and then and then we got to make a video about our next Sorry. book. Sorry. Yeah, how long have we been going for? Um, how are we doing? How are we doing on 40, time? 41 minutes. Well, shoot. It's t- it is time to wrap it up. Okay, let me see if I have any more notes. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, and just a nice reminder that war tends to be hardest on children. Yeah. You know. We should read Man in the High Castle. Hmm. Why have we not thought of that yet? Is that your America, not our America? Yeah. Our America, not their America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should think about that. Yeah, that, that series was really good. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Okay, last week, it, yeah, it was this most this past week, um, it was National or International Giraffe Day. And I saw a picture of some truck with a giraffe in the back of it. And I was like, he's not going to make it past the power lines. Like, it was ridiculous. And I was so stressed out about it. So Allison says, speaking of giraffes, did y'all see that truck driving through Shreveport with the giraffe in it? Peggy says, what? When, Allison? (laughs) It was was clearly fake because otherwise it would have been a beheaded giraffe. Right. Right. It was not, there was not enough giraffe. It was a stuffed Giraffe head. Giraffe, yeah. Neck. But it looked like it looked like a giraffe like lay like yeah. laying down, but his whole head was up, still going to hit the power <clears throat> yeah. lines. It was wild. Which our power lines might have been lower last week anyway, because we had quite a situation. <laughs> South on Uri with giraffes. I'll read that book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah. Anyways, that was nuts. Yeah. So um if you haven't read West with Giraffes, please go read that. And um yeah, in the author's notes, they mentioned a lot of boats went down. Yeah, you know, it was, it was we don't awful. we don't talk about it, but like during World War One and World War Two, there was a lot of civilian boats. Like, and that's kind of like the point of this book, right? right? Is to bring bring uh, you know recognition to that fact. Um, but we got involved in World War One, like theoretically, because of the sinking of a of a um, civilian boat. Um, I mean, that was just it was like all the time, man. Mm. It's crazy. Crazy. That's nuts. Crazy. Well, as we wrap this up, um, if y'all have anything left to say, throw it in the chat real quick and we'll we'll grab it before we go. But uh, in this week in literary history, some people wrote some books and some people read some books. I was one of those people. <laughs> That's all I got. That read one. <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate everybody for sticking around and playing with us. This was a rather long episode for what was ultimately one of our shorter books, yeah. I think. So, but th- there was a lot to say, so that's good. Uh, join us next week for a really long book. Uh, we will put out our syllabus for that one because 4th of July is coming up. There will be some uh, weirdness there, but we're probably going to spend more than three weeks on Dune because yeah. it is a big one. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's uh, on par with three body, you know, yeah. in terms of length. So we've done that in terms before. Of the whole series. Um, please, <laughs> Shelby, please what? <laughs> More than three weeks. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so I think we'll split it into three parts, um, but split it across four weeks, you know, and just get 4th of July. Yeah, of July yeah. So, yeah. um, but yeah, we'll, we'll post that syllabus here in just a few minutes and, um, you know, please tell us more things that you want to read, add it to our list and we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> like, am I forgetting anything? All right, we'll see you soon. We go cry now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me turn this off so I can go cry. Bye. Bye.